Okay, so good evening, everybody. So let's begin with a prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet anfangen. Dear Father in heaven, lieber Vater im Himmel, we thank you that we can now um, have this worship session together. So wir danken, dass wir jetzt diese Andachtszeit zusammen haben können. And we ask you to please uh, bless us. Und wir bitten um deinen Segen. And that you would uh, help us to understand your word correctly. Und dass du uns hilfst, dass wir dein Wort auf korrekter Weise verstehen können. And that you please open to our understanding Daniel chapter 11. Und dass du für uns uh, Daniel 11 auftust. And please forgive us uh, our shortcomings today. Und bitte vergebe uns unsere Unzulänglichkeiten heute. Please grant us, uh, concentration still this evening. Und bitte gewähre uns noch diesen Abend Aufmerksamkeit. Und bitte halte den Satan fern. Und wir bitten und beten in Jesu Namen. Amen. 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 Okay. So... <coughs> We will continue with this study about Daniel 11. So, wir werden fortsetzen mit diesem Studium über Daniel 11. And uh, when you just turn to the live stream group, I reposted yesterday's uh, findings. Und wenn du zum live stream group gehst, ich habe die, uh, das, was wir angeschaut haben gestern, wieder gepostet. Okay. So, we will again make a short recap. And then we will continue from verse 23 forward. So, we will make a short wiederholung machen and then we will fortsetzen from verse 23 forward. Okay, so let's go to Daniel 11, verse 16. We will go to Daniel 11 and verse 16. Okay. Daniel 11, verse 16. Daniel 11, and verse 16. And it says, um, But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the glorious land, by, and, uh, which by his hand shall be consumed. So we saw that the he in this verse is the king of the north or Antiochus. So we have seen that this er in this verse is König des Nordens or Antiochus. And he that cometh against, no, sorry, he was Rome. Okay. And er and, war Rome. And he that cometh against him, him was Antiochus or the north. And that's him here, uh, that's for Antiochus, also this north. And, um, and this also marked then when Rome conquered Syria. And that's markiert auch when Rome Syrien erschlagen hat, erobert hat, erobert hat. and um, added to his uh, kingdom in 65 BC. Und zu seinem Königreich in 65 BC hinzufügt. And this was Pompey. Das war Pompey. Okay, and then also when it says, and he shall stand in the glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed, we saw this was when they conquered Judea in Jerusalem. Wir können sehen, wenn es sagt, dass durch seine Hand es wird ähm, verzehrt werden, dass das Juda war, also Palästina, also den Juden. Okay. Und wir sahen ähnliche similar illustrations that took place back then, then what happened in the destruction of Jerusalem. We saw similar illustrations that took place back then when they conquered Judea. Also wir haben Ähnlichkeiten, als sie Judäa erobert haben. With how they then destroyed Jerusalem. Mit wie sie denn Jerusalem zerstört. Because what happened back then and what happened at the destruction in, in Jerusalem. Das, was ist da passiert, was auch in der Zerstörung Jerusalems passiert? We saw the... Hmm? No. They didn't spare man or woman or child. Or no, they, they mingled the blood of the, of the slain one with the blood of the sacrifices. Das Blut von denjenigen, die geschlachtet worden sind, mit das Blut von den 
Opfergaben vermengt. Yes. Okay, and this was 63 BC when they first time conquered Jerusalem and Judea. Das war 63 vor Christus, als sie das erste Mal Jerusalem und Judea eroberten. And this was also then um, when Christ was born, this was still the present uh, condition that the Romans occupied Judea. Zu der Zeit, wo Christus geboren wurde, also dieser Zustand war noch dasselbe, dass die Römer um, als Besatzungsmacht in Judea waren. Okay, now let's continue in verse 17. Vers 17. Um, no, this was in his time. Okay, so now let's continue verse 17. So, Vers 17. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of the, his whole kingdom and upright once with him. Thus shall he do, and he shall give him the daughter of women, corrupting him. But she shall not stand on his side, neither be for him. So we saw in verse 17 was then illustrated here the civil war between Pompey and Julius Caesar. So, Vers 17 haben wir hier gesehen, dargestellt, diese Bürgerkrieg zwischen Pompey und Julius Caesar. And where Julius Caesar then won the battle. So, Julius Caesar hat diesen Kampf gewonnen. And Pompey was murdered by Ptolemy. Und danach war Pompey ermordet worden durch Ptolemy. And then Caesar becomes the, uh, the guardian over Egypt. Und dann Caesar wird der Wächter über Ägypten an seinen Stadt. And these upright ones that are mentioned here were the Jews that helped Caesar in his battle. Und diese Auflichtigen, die hier erwähnt worden sind, waren die Juden, die Caesar in seinen uh, Feldzügen geholfen haben. Especially when he then became guardian over Egypt. We didn't read this specifically, but there were some uprisings and the Jews helped Caesar. Insbesondere, wenn er jetzt Wächter über Ägypten geworden ist, also wir haben diese Teile nicht gelesen, aber es gab um, irgendwelchen zivilen um, ja, Mini-Bürgerkriege in Ägypten und gerade da haben die Juden geholfen. Okay, and uh, then also uh, this, this daughter of women was Cleopatra that was now yeah, became the lover of Julius Caesar and vice versa. Tochter von Frauen, das war Cleopatra, die zusammen mit Julius Caesar um, geliebte wurden. Okay, and then verse 18. Und Vers 18. After this shall he turn his face unto the isles and shall take many, but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. Without his own reproach he shall cause it to turn upon him. So only the first part of the verse the pioneers understood. This was basically when Caesar won this battle against Pharnaces and then made this famous Veni Vidi Vici. Also, die Pioniere haben nur die erste Teil dieses Verses verstanden und die haben das nämlich gesehen, dass wir als Julius Caesar diesen Kampf gegen was sie kommt? Farnesis. Farnesis gewonnen hat und der hat diesen sehr berühmten ähm, Spruch da gemacht, also Vini Vici, Vidi Vici, ich kam, ich sah, ich besiegte. Okay, and then um, in verse 19. Vers 19. Then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. So this was now the assassination of Julius Caesar. So, das war die Ermordung von Julius Caesar. Just before he was uh, proclaimed king. Gerade da, bevor er König gekrönt worden ist. Okay. And now verse 20. Vers 20. Then shall stand up in his estate a raise of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. So, Julius Caesar's successor was uh, Caesar Augustus. So, the Nachfolger von Julius Caesar was Caesar Augustus. And he was to be a tax raiser. And he was a tax raiser. And this oder is so. what you can read in Luke 2, when everybody, the whole world was to be taxed. Das kannst du in Luke 2 lesen, als die gesamte Welt also registriert werden sollte für Steuereinnahmen. Uh, and that's why also Jesus' parents went then to Bethlehem to get enrolled for Und taxation. Deswegen sind die Eltern von Jesus nach Bethlehem gegangen, um sich zu registrieren. So therefore the birth of Christ is marked in this time. So hier der Geburt Christi ist markiert. And we read that 
the Augustinian era was a time of peace and prosperity. Wir haben gelesen, dass diese Ära von Augustus war eine Zeit von Wohlstand und Frieden. And Rome was uh, in a Zeit of wealth and power. Und es war eine goldene Ära von Rom. Sie war in der Höhepunkt von ihrem Wohlstand und Macht. And Augustus also says here was destroyed neither in anger nor in battle. He died peacefully. Und es sagt hier, dass Augustus weder im Kampf noch im Zorn starb, sondern er hat friedlich, ist friedlich gestorben. Und dann Vers 21. Und 22. Und in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. So this was now Tiberius Caesar. Er spricht über Tiberius Caesar, who was Augustus' successor. Der ist der Nachfolger von Augustus. And this was also the time when Christ was then crucified. This is the prince of the covenant that is broken here. Und das ist auch der Zeit, wo Christus gekreuzigt worden ist, also der Prinz der Bundnis, der gebrochen worden ist. Okay. So, and he was a vile person, but he came in with flatteries. Okay. Er war eine abtrünnige Person, aber der ist in seine Amt durch Schmeicheleien gekommen. Okay, so that's just a quick summary of what we looked at yesterday. Yes. And the baptism was in the 15th year of Tiberius, we can read in Luke 3. It was the same Caesar, that the baptism and that's the Yes. Okay. 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 Go and let's continue. So, jetzt wollen wir fortsetzen. Because verse 22, Vers 22 uh, ends with the the cross, right? Hört mit dem Kreuz auf. So, where the prince of the covenant is broken is Christ. Also, wo dieser Prinz des Bundes gebrochen worden ist, das markiert Christus. And the cross was in AD 31. Und das Kreuz war in 31 nach Christus. Okay. But now let's read verse 23. Aber jetzt lesen wir Vers 23. It says, And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall come, become strong with a small people. Okay, so when you turn out to your notes, and you need to go down pretty much to page 18. So when we to the notes and we must come to verse 23 or Seite 18 in the notes. Yes, under verse 23. Under verse 23. It's pretty much. Can you help them? Okay. So he first, he first quotes there. Mm, verse 23. So, zuerst zitiert er Vers 23. And then he comments on it. Und danach kommentiert er dann. Okay, everybody there? Is jeder da? So, wait a little bit for... This is 270.1. Yeah, 270.1. So let's read verse 23 and then we will read the comment. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. The him with whom the league he has spoken of is made must be the same power which has been the subject of the prophecy from birth, verse 14, uh, from the 14th verse. And this is the Roman power as shown beyond controversy in the fulfillment of the prophecy in three individuals as already noticed who suc successively ruled over the Roman Empire, namely Julius, Augustus and Tiberius Caesar. Okay, so when it says here, and after the league made with him, who is the him? When it says here, and after the Bund is with him, who is the er? Or the him? No, the, the him. Who's the him? It's wrong. 
Yes. This straw. It says here, the him with whom the league he has spoken of has made must be the same power which has been the subject of prophecy from the 14th verse. So, der ihm von hier gesprochen wird, ist derselbe wie gesprochen worden ist vom 14. Vers an. Rome. Uh, Rome. No, not, no, Rome. Okay. So, and that is that this is the Roman power as shown beyond controversy in fulfillment of the prophecy in three individuals as already noticed who successively ruled over the Roman Empire, namely Julius, Augustus, and Tiberius Caesar. Okay, so. So the him, the league made with him, is the league made with the Romans. So das okay. Bundnis mit ihm, der gemacht worden ist, ist das Bundnis, die mit die Römer gemacht worden okay. ist. Okay, but Mark is correct in the sense that it was the Jews who made now a league with him, with Rome. Aber okay. Mark ist wohl richtig in dem Sinne, dass es war die Juden, die diesen Bundnis mit Rome gemacht haben. Okay, so the him, das ihm, refers to Rome. Sich auf Rome. And the league... Bundnis with das Bundnis mit ihm ist der League between Jews and Rome. Das Bundnis zwischen den Juden und Okay, so let's just uh, read this. Lass uns dies lesen. Let's just continue here. Lass uns fortsetzen. Says the first on returning to the fort of his own land in triumph stumbled and fell. So still speaking about actually we can skip this paragraph and just go to the next paragraph. Überspringen wir diesen Absatz, gehen wir zum nächsten. It says having having taken us down. Okay. So having Taking us down through the uh, secular events of the empire to the end of the 70 weeks, the prophet, in verse 23, takes us back to the time when the Roman, Romans became directly connected with the people of God by the Jewish League, B.C. 161. So he always uses this incorrect date, because on the chart we understand it's 158. Right. Also er benutzt diesen falschen Datum hier, aber auf der Karte die richtige Date ist 1... Um 58. So here it says here 158 time of the league between the Jews and Romans. So 158 is the time of the bondness between the Jews and the Romans. Okay. Yes. Who is the second team? The second team. Yeah, the second team. For Eastern come. That's Rome. It's also Rome. Yes. It goes on in verse 24. Yes. That speaks about Rome. So, after the league made with Rome, it says here, Rome shall work deceitfully. Uh, for Rome shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. That's what it says. Sprecht über Rome. Okay, so let's just go back to the paragraph. So, gehen wir zurück zu diesem Absatz. So, in 161 BC, he says, was the league, but the chart says 158. Also, he says here 161 here in the notizen. Aber die Karte gibt uns den richtigen Datum 158. So, this was here then 158 BC. So, diese Bundnis wurde geschlossen 158 vor Christus. So, we can see therefore that in verse 23, yeah, the prophet or the prophecy already took us to AD 31. So, wir können sehen in Vers 22, diese Auslegung, diese Prophezeiung brachte uns zum Kreuz am äh, 31 nach Christus. But now it takes us back in time again to 158 BC. Aber jetzt der nächsten Vers bringt es uns wieder zurück in der Zeit zu 158 vor Christus. Okay. Can you explain why you changed the date because it was written after the card has been made, right? Yes. And you disregarded Council. Council. Yeah. Also die Frage wurde gestellt, warum Uriah Smith diesen Datum geändert hat, denn er hat dies geschrieben, nachdem der Karte erstellt worden ist. Und der einfache Antwort ist, ist, dass Uriah Smith den Rat von Ellen White verwarf. Yes. So, so the white clearly said, that don't change any of these figures unless by inspiration. So Ellen okay. White hat gesagt, keine von diesen 
Figuren oder Daten verändert werden sollte, es sei denn durch die Inspiration von Gott. So he trusted them more in the world historians in this point than Uriah Smith had more faith of prophecy in the uh, weltliche Historiker gelegt als das uh, Geist der Weisheit. Okay. So <coughs> because they were already under the second abomination there, right? Because you can see it's also written here 1897. Es wird hier geschrieben 1879 äh 97 verzeih. Yes, and the four generations of Adventism were also the four abominations. Die vier Generationen von Adventismus sind diese vier Gräuel. Hier sind sie unter den zweiten. Okay, so not two leaks made. No, it's only one. Okay, I remember that we discovered this years ago, and we were talking about there would be two leaks after the main. I looked it up. Also, another pioneer he. Basically rejected 158 instead of 161. Okay. So, <clears throat> and um, in the second abomination uh, is spiritualism, right? Where you lift up your thoughts above God's word. And the zweite Groll is the Spiritismus, where you eben deine Gedanken über Gottes Gedanken erhebst. Okay. So, just finish this paragraph from 161 BC forward. So wir lesen diese Absatz zu Ende, so wo es geschrieben ist, BC 161, von da lesen wir an. So as from which point we are then taken down in a direct line of events to the final triumph of the church and the setting up of God's everlasting kingdom. The Jews, being grievously oppressed by the Syrian kings, sent an embassy to Rome to solicit the aid of the Romans and to join themselves in a league of amity and confederacy with them. The Romans listened to the request of the Jews and granted them a decree couched in these words. So they basically then made a pact. So they have then a bondness miteinander verschlossen. Okay, now we'll just jump over the next paragraph and go down to verse 24. So, überspringen wir diesen Absätzen, gehen wir jetzt zu Vers 24 hinunter. So in this, in this pact, they basically, or this league, they promised assistance in a case of war. To each other. So, okay. Innerhalb von diesem Bundnis, die haben einander verheißt, um, dass sie gegenseitig einander helfen werden, in dem Fall von einem Krieg. And when you just go back to um, verse 17. Und wenn du zurück zu Vers 17 gehst. In Daniel 11. In Daniel 11. It says, he shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. These upright ones they were the Jews. So okay. Diese Aufrichtigen, die hier erwähnt ist, das waren die Juden. And they helped Julius Caesar back then in the uprisings in Egypt. Und die haben Julius Caesar äh, geholfen in den Aufrühren, die in Ägypten aufkamen. And Julius Caesar was well after the league was made. Okay. Julius Caesar war weit nachdem dieses Bündnis geschlossen worden ist. So therefore, based upon this league, they helped, therefore... Julius Caesar back then. Okay. So, basierend auf diese Bundnis, die hier verschlossen worden ist, haben sie dann danach Julius Caesar <coughs> geholfen in Ägypten. Okay. So now let's go back to uh, verse 24. So jetzt Vers 24. It says, He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province and he shall do that which his fathers have not done nor his father's fathers, he shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. Okay, so let's see what Uriah Smith writes about this. Let's just listen what Uriah Smith wrote about this. Uh, it says, the usual manner in which nations that before the days of Rome entered upon a valuable provinces and rich territory was by war and conquest. Rome was now to do what had not been done by the fathers or fathers' fathers, namely, receive these acquisitions through peaceful means. The custom before unheard of was now inaugurated of kings leaving by legacy their kingdoms to the Romans. 
Rome came into possession of large provinces in this manner. Okay. So, what does it mean that he entered peaceably upon the fattest places of the province? Was bedeutet es, dass er friedlich auf den größten oder reichsten Teilen des Provinzes ähm, eroberte? What did we just read? Was haben wir gerade gelesen? Through inheritance. Yes, through inheritance, right? Durch Erbschaft. So, peace. Or legacy. So, mm -hmm. Durch or I don't know what legacy is. Über Über Legacy Okay. So and that's why uh, we can say that Rome came up peaceably. Okay. Mm -hmm. So können wir sagen, dass Rome uh, heraufkam auf because this is not true when you look literally at its first beginning, okay? Das ist nicht wahr, wenn du Roms seinen Anfang anschaust. Because Rome came up, there were like a colony of robbers, okay? Rome, das war wie eine Kolonie von Diebe. Yeah. And, and they expanded military with military strength in Brutality, okay. Sie erweiterten sich durch Conquest, also durch uh, Eroberung, er Eroberung yes. und I mean, Krieg. Yes. And, but when they came now in contact with God's people, you yeah, through the League. Aber wenn sie in zusammen, wenn sie zusammengekommen sind mit Gottes Volk durch diesen Bundnis. Yeah, this is when they entered now the prophetic stage and when they now were recognized in Bible prophecy, okay. Und es ist an diesem Punkt, wo sie auf die prophetische Bühne um, heraufgetreten sind und in der Prophetie denn anerkannt worden sind. Yeah. And at this time they were then, from this time forward they came up peaceably. Okay? Es ist von dieser Zeit an, dass die auf friedevolle Weise heraufkamen. Just like for instance the United States of America. Right? Genauso wie zum Beispiel der USA. Yeah, they were already uh, occupied and people were living there well before 1798. Okay. Also, USA war schon besetzt und bevölkert mit Menschen weit vor 1798. Uh, but the prophecy marks them at 1798. Okay. Die Prophetie markiert sie 1798. Because then they gained prophetic relevance and that's why the Lord then mentioned them. Okay. Es ist dann an diese Zeit, wo sie prophetische Relevanz bekommen haben und der Herr hat sie erwähnt. Okay. So now let's continue. Let's um, further read. Next paragraph. Next absatz. And those who thus came under the dominion of Rome derived no small advantage therefrom. They were treated with kindness and leniency. 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 It was like having the prey and spoil dis distributed among them. They were protected from the enemies and rested in peace and safety under the aegis of the Roman power. To the latter portion of this verse, Bishop Newton gives the idea of forecasting devices from strongholds instead of against them. This the Romans did from the strong fortress of their seven-hilled city. Even for a time, doubtless a prophetic time, 360 years. From what point are these years to be dated? Probably from the event brought to view in the following verse. Okay, so when you go back to... Daniel 11, verse 24. So, wenn du zurück zu Daniel 11, Vers 24 willst. Yeah, if you just read the last bit of this verse under the colon, uh, behind the colon, after the colon. Lesen wir den letzten Teil von diesem Vers, also nach dem Kolon. Uh, Doppelpunkt. Nach dem Doppelpunkt. It says, Ye, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even four times. So, here it says against. Okay. So, hier sagt es gegen. But, Jura Smith says, the better rendering would be from. Aber Uriah okay. Smith sagt, der bessere Auslegung wäre denn von seine ähm, Festung. Festungen. Yes. 
Okay, so in his stronghold was Rome, as he says. Die Festungen, wie er sagt, ist Rom. Okay, gewesen. so. <coughs> stronghold was the city of Rome. Die Festung war der Stadt Rom. And this time. Und diese Zeit. Da erwähnt es. Was 360 years. Über 360 Jahre. Okay. He says that this, this time, the 360 years, would be reckoned then from the following verse, from the event in the following verse. Und diese 360 Jahre werde angerechnet von das Ereignis, was im nächsten Vers stattfindet. So let's read the next verse. So lass uns Vers 25, das nächste Vers lesen. It says. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Okay, so let's read now what this means. So let us lesen what this bedeutet. And we will not read all of it because it's a long passage now. Und wir werden nicht alles lesen, denn es ist eine sehr große Auslegung hier. It says, by verses 23 and 24, we are brought down this side of the league between the Jews and the Romans, BC 61, 161, to the time when Rome had acquired universal dominion. The verse now before us brings up to view a vigorous campaign against the king of the south, which is Egypt, and the occurrence of a notable battle between great and mighty armies. Did such events as these transpire in the history of Rome about this time? They did. The war was... Uh, no. the, the wars. No, it says double wars. Yeah, yes, the wars was. Speaking about the wars in the, the sentence before. I think it's just a spelling mistake. It's probably the war was the war between Egypt and Rome. And the battle was the Battle of Actium. Let us take a brief view of the circumstances that led to this conflict. So he says, therefore, verse 25 speaks about the Battle of Actium. So, Vers 25 spricht über diesen Kampf in Actium. Okay. And it was between Rome and Egypt. Okay. And this Kampf war between Rome and Egypt. Okay. <laughs> and it says here, right in verse 25, that uh, this would be the king of the south. And it says in verse 25 that Egypt is the king of the south. So therefore, uh, Rome is the king of the north. So Rome is des Nordens. Okay. So let's read the next uh, paragraph. Next Absatz. It's 273.6. It says, Mark Antony, Augustus Caesar and Lepidus constitute, constituted the triumvirate which had sworn to avenge the death of Julius Caesar. This Antony became the brother-in-law of Augustus by marrying his sister Octavia. Antony was sent into Egypt on government business, but fell a victim to the arts and charms of Cleopatra, Egypt's dissolute queen. Okay, so <clears throat> basically, after Julius Caesar was murdered, so, nachdem Julius Caesar ermordet worden ist, yeah, there were three people raised up to now fill his position and to avenge his death. Es gab drei Leute, die aufgestellt worden sind, um seine Position zu erfüllen und seinen Tod zu rächen. Uh, so it was Mark Antony. Es war eins Mark Antony. Then um, Caesar Augustus. Caesar Augustus. And then uh, Lepidus. And then Lepidus. Okay. So, and we saw that Mark Antony 
Uh, he, he said he went down to Egypt. Right? Und er sagt hier, dass Mark Anthony nach Ägypten hinabging. Yeah, and Mark Anthony then joined himself with Cleopatra. Mark okay. Anthony hat sich mit Cleopatra vereint. Uh, she was formerly aligned with Julius Caesar. Okay. Sie war vorhin vereint mit Julius Caesar. Okay. And Lepidus, he died shortly after. Okay. Kurz danach ist Lepidus gestorben. So the only ones that were left were Augustus and Mark Antony. Die okay. einzigen, die übrigen waren, war Caesar Augustus und Mark Antony. And Caesar Augustus, he remained in Rome. So Caesar Augustus war in Rome geblieben. But because Mark Antony was so infatuated about Cleopatra, okay. Aber da gerade Mark Antony so verliebt war in Cleopatra, uh, he then forsook Rome and joined himself basically to Egypt. Er okay. hat sich diesen Bundnis, also der hat sich sein uh, Allegiance, seine Zugehörigkeit, seine Zugehörigkeit mit Rom also verleugnet und hat sich mit ähm, Ägypten äh, angeschlossen. Okay, and he was a Roman, but he basically joined the South. Okay. Und Mark Antony war zwar ein Römer, aber hat den Süden angeschlossen. Okay. Okay. Oder ist den Süden angeschlossen. Das ist, wenn man sehen kann, dass Rom, der Endtime Kingdom, ist auch der Nord und der Süd. Also hier können wir sehen, wie äh, am Ende der Geschichte, also in unserer Zeit, das König des Nordens und König des Südens sind derselbe ähm, Imperium oder Königreich. Okay, so basically, eventually, then both wanted to have the whole kingdom. Okay. So, und letztendlich äh, beide wollte das gesamte Königreich haben. And therefore there was then war. Und deswegen gab es Krieg. Which was then the battle of Actium. Und das okay. war diesen Kampf um Actium. So it was Augustus Caesar against Mark Antony and Cleopatra. Es war Augustus Caesar gegen Mark Antony und Cleopatra. And so maybe we can just jump down a little bit. So, jetzt springen wir ein bisschen hinab. We'll just go to the next paragraph. Gehen wir zum nächsten Absatz. And um, we can just read how Antony prepared and how Augustus prepared. Und wir okay. können lesen, wie sich Mark Antony sich vorbereitete und wie Caesar Augustus sich vorbereitet. So, we are in 274.1. 274 so, 274.1. It says, Antony assembled his fleet at, at Samos. 500 ships of war, of extraordinary size and structure, having several decks, one above another, with towers upon the head and stern, made an imposing and form formidable array. These ships carried 200,000 foot and 12,000 horse. The king of Libya, Cilicia, Cappadocia, Paphlogonia, um, Comagina and Thrace, were there in person, and those of Pontus, Judea, Lysionia, Galatia, and Media had sent their troops. A more splendid and gorgeous military spectacle than this fleet of battleships, as they spread their sails and moved out upon the bosom, bosom of the sea, the world has rarely seen. Surpassing all in magnificence, magnificence came the galley of Cleopatra, floating like a palace of gold beneath a cloud of purple sails. Its flags and streamers fluttered in the wind, and trumpets other than instruments of war made the heavens resound with notes of joy and triumph. Antony followed close after in a galley of almost equal magnificence. <coughs> and the giddy, or giddy? Giddy. giddy queen, intoxicated with the sight of the warlike array, short-sighted and vainglorious, at the head of her infamous troop of eunuchs, foolishly threatened the Roman capital with approaching ruin. Now let's see how Augustus prepared. So, lasst uns im nächsten Absatz lesen, wie Caesar Augustus sich vorbereitet. Caesar Augustus, on the other hand, displayed less pomp but more utility. He had but half as many ships as Antony and only 8,000 foot. But all his troops were chosen men, and on board his fleet were none but experienced seamen. Whereas Antony, not finding mar mariners sufficient, had been obliged to man his vessels with artisans of every class, 
man inexperienced and better calculated to cause trouble than to do real service in time of battle. And so here we see, see basically Mark Antony had more men, better ships, but less experienced soldiers. So we can see that Mark Antony so mehrere and bessere Schiffe hatte and mehrere Soldaten hat, aber weniger um, Erfahrung. Uh, so Soldaten von weniger Erfahrung. Uh, it was more with this outward appearance, the glory, the vain glory, but Augustus had more utility in mind. Äußerlich sah das besser aus, aber Augustus hat mehr Nutzen von seine weniger Kräften gehabt. Okay, let's go to the next paragraph. Zum nächsten Absatz. Oh, actually, we can skip even the next and um, überspringen wir der nächste. Go to 275.3. Gehen wir zu 275.3. It says the battle was fought. Der Kampf wurde gefochten. The battle was fought September 2nd, BC 31. At the mouth of the Gulf of Ambracia, near the city of Actium, the world was at was the stake for which these stern warriors, warriors Antony and Caesar now played. The contest, long doubtful, was at length decided by the course which Cleopatra pursued, for she, frightened at the din of battle, took to flight when there was no danger, and drew after her the whole Egyptian fleet. Antony, beholding this movement, and lost to everything but his blind passion for her, precepted, uh, thank you, precipitately followed, and yielded a victory to Caesar, which had his Egyptian forces proved true to him, and had he proved true to his own manhood, he might have gained. Okay, so, uh, because Cleopatra, she left the battle scene, this was basically the defeat of the South. So, while Cleopatra den, den Kampffeld verließ, das war das Niedergang vom König des Südens. Okay. Oder von dem Süden. Next paragraph. Next Absatz. It was, this was the of Actium. Yes, this was the Battle of Actium. And it was 31 yes. BC. Mm -hmm. This was the so Kampf um Actium. This was okay. 31 BC. Not this down. 31 BC. Mm. Okay. And uh, next paragraph it says, next absatz sagt, This battle doubtless marks the commencement of the time mentioned in verse 24. So this is beginning now the 360 years. So diese Datum markiert das Anfang von 360 Jahren. And as during this time devices were to be forecast from the stronghold of Rome, we should conclude that at the end of that period, Western supremacy would cease or such a change take place in the empire that the city would no longer be considered the seat of government. Now, so when Rome was the stronghold, so from, as Rome der Festung war, from 31 BC, from 31 nach Christ, uh, for Christus, then prophecy gives a time which would lead them to 330 AD. Right? So the Prophezeiung gives us a site, this führt von da bis da is es Diese 360 bringt uns zu 330 nach Christus. So, Smith says, when this marks the beginning, when all Rome as a stronghold is established, this would mark then the end of Rome as a stronghold. Okay. So, sagt, dies markiert das Anfang als Rome als... The city of Rome. Okay. ...der Stadt Rome als Festung, dann dies mark das markiert das Ende. And he says here... Und er sagt... Uh, from BC 31, a prophetic time of 360 years was, would bring us to AD 330. And it hence becomes a noteworthy fact that the seat of empire was removed from Rome to Constantinople by Constantine the Great in that very year. Okay, so what happened in 330 AD? So, was geschah in 330 nach Christus? <laughs> yes, Rome was removed to Constantinople, right? So, the seat of government. They have the seat of the government from Rome to Constantinople. Verlegt. Okay, so... Good. Now let's read the next verse. So, lesen wir der nächsten Vers, Vers 26. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. So, let's see what this means. So, let's lesen, was dies bedeutet. 
So those that partook of his table basically now kill kill him. Okay. Diejenigen, die an seinem Tisch gegessen haben, bringen ihn um. Says, and this speaks about Anthony was now killed. Okay. Das spricht hier über Mark Anthony ist ermordet worden. Says the cause of Anthony's overthrow was the desertion of his allies and friends, those that fed of the portion of his meat. First, Cleopatra, as already described, suddenly withdrew from the battle, taking 60 ships of the line of uh, of the line with her. Secondly, the land army, disgusted with the infatuation of Antony, went over to Caesar, who received them with open arms. Thirdly, when Antony arrived at Libya, he found that the forces which he had, uh, which he had there left under Scarpus to guard the frontier, had declared for Caesar. Fourthly, being followed by Caesar into Egypt, he was betrayed by Cleopatra, and his forces surrendered to Caesar. Hereupon, in rage and despair, he took his own life. Okay, so here we can see everybody deserted him. So here can we see that jeder hat Mark Antony verlassen. Uh, and eventually, uh, he had no way out but to commit suicide. Okay. Da hat er keinen Ausweg am Ende gesehen, als sein Leben zu nehmen. You think he was killed and not committed? No, I said. Uh. I had das gesagt. Uh. Yeah, but he was killed or he made suicide? Sorry. So, 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 they destroyed him in a sense that they left him. Okay. So, they have him zerstört in dem Sinne, that they him all verliesen. Okay. Now, next, so, verse 26. So, verse 26. Mark. <coughs> Mark. <coughs> Deserted by his own forces and committed suicide. Er ist verlassen oder verraten worden von seinen eigenen Kräften und dann hat er Selbstmord begangen. Ist der Selbstmord begangen? Okay. Then was 27. Und jetzt Vers 27. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because in a few paragraphs before we didn't read it, but um, he basically quotes this Latin proverb that when God wishes to destroy, he first makes mad, implying it that this is what would happen to Caesar. But then now it says that in rage and despair, he took his own life. So he basically, this proverb that he applied to Caesar actually applied to. Actually, uh, but I think, uh, isn't it Uriah Smith applying it to Mark Antony? I think he applies it to Mark Antony. Uh, well, can you give the reference? So let's just read 275.2. And this was a paragraph that we skipped. This is eine Absatz, die wir übersprungen haben. It says, As soon as the season permitted, both armies were put in motion on both land and sea. The fleets at length entered the Ambracian Gulf in Epirus, Epirus, and the land forces were drawn upon either shore in plain view. Antony's most experienced generals advised him not to hazard a battle by sea with his inexperienced mar mar mariners. Mariners. mariners, but sent Cleopatra back to Egypt and hastened at once into Thrace or Macedonia and trust the issue to his land forces, who were composed of veteran troops. But he, illustrating the old adage, quem uh, de... Des uh, I cannot speak Latin. Quem des volt perdere prius dementat, whom God wishes to destroy, he first makes mad, infatuated by Cleopatra, seemed only desirous of pleasing her, and she, trusting to appearances only, deemed her fleet invincible, and advised immediate action. So he, he was mad. Yeah, he was mad. He right? was mad. 
Yes, so yes. er hier ist der Verrückte gewesen, also verrückt nach Cleopatra. Because he was infatuated. Okay. Weil er so Kopf über Füß verliebt war. Yes. Er hat auch seine Generale nicht zugehört. Okay, so yeah, this woman of the south controlled him. Diese Frau des Südens hat ihn kontrolliert. Okay, now let's go to verse 27. Jetzt gehen wir zu Vers 27. Yes. Ein bisschen wie beiden. In Afghanistan hat er auch seine Generale nicht so zugehört. I guess this um, Queen Diaz, how do you say it? And those would be there if you use them. Yeah, I guess that's what the world is doing to, to Biden is dementia. Mit Biden ist seine Dementia, ist Dementia? Uh, Demenz. Da ist seine Demenz mit Biden irgendwie, das scheint dasselbe, was der Herr mit ihm macht. Er macht ihn verrückt, bevor er ihn zerstört. Okay. So, now verse 27. Verse 27. It's 276.3. This is 276.3. <coughs> it says, And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. So let's see what this means. So let's see what this means. Antony and Caesar were formerly in alliance. Yet under the garb of friendship, they were both aspiring and intriguing, intriguing. intriguing for universal dominion. Their protestations of def deference to and friendship for each other were the utterances of hy hypocrites. They spoke lies at one table. Octavia, the wife of Antony and sister of Caesar, declared to the people of Rome at the time Antony divorced her that she had consented to marry him solely with the hope that it would prove a pledge of union between Caesar and Antony. But that counsel did not prosper. The rupture came, and in the conflict that ensued, Caesar came off entirely victorious. Okay, so he basically also, uh, he left this northern wife and married then this southern wife, right? So, er hat im Grunde diesen nördlichen Frau verlassen für diesen südlichen Frau. And therefore he became the king of the south. Und dadurch okay. ist er König des Südens geworden. So, we definitely see women uh, also with the south power. So, okay. wir sehen auf jeden Fall Frauen mit den Südmächten. Uh, we had Berenice and we have Cleopatra. Wir okay. haben Berenice und hier Cleopatra. Okay, so, this was no um, maybe that you can see that through the two popes, um, because they're controlling both sides of the issue, so it's definitely something to see in that. You can see that with two popes, they control both sides of the issue, but in the end it's the same woman. Yes, two women in some sense. Two women in some sense. Okay, so... <coughs> This therefore was when Mark Antony plus Caesar Augustus um, made apparent made an apparent Legions, okay. So here is where the two had a visible alliance with each other. Before the war. Before the war. Before the war. Yes, this was just it's like a Anhang. flashback or like a added information what happened earlier, okay? It's not zusätzliche information über das, was zuvor geschah. Okay, so, because before the, the Battle of Actium, we have here in verse 25. So, in verse 25, we have this Kampf from Actium. Yeah. But this year, this league between Mark Antony and Caesar was before the Battle of Actium. But this bündnis here between Mark Antony and Caesar Augustus was noch vor diesem Kampf. Okay, so it's just like uh, first gives you the rundown of the war and how Mark Antony lost the war. Es gibt dir zuerst diese Erklärung vom Krieg und wie Mark Antony diesen Krieg verlor. And then it just gives like a reverse of how it was before the war. Okay. 
erklärt es einfach, wie es war davor. Okay. So, now let's read verse 28. And let's um, read this. Lass uns das lesen. It says, Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. It says, Two returnings from foreign conquest are here brought to view. The first after the events narrated in verses 26 and 27 and the second after his power had had indignation against the Holy Covenant and had performed exploits. The first was fulfilled in the return of Caesar after his expedition against Egypt and Antony. He returned to Rome with abundant honor and riches. So, okay, let's just read this. For says Prideau, at this time such vast riches were brought to Rome from Egypt on the reducing of that country and the return of Octavianus and his army from thence, that the value of money fell one half, and the prices of provisions and all vendable wares was doubled thereon. Caesar celebrated his vic victories in a three days triumph, a triumph which Cleopatra herself would have graced as one of the royal vic captives, had she not artfully caused herself to be bitten by the fatal asp. Okay. <coughs> So what happened to Cleopatra? Was geschah mit Cleopatra am Ende? And she committed also suicide, right? Sie hat auch um, Selbstmord. And she was bitten. Sie um, ist gebissen worden. Emily. 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 Uh, she was bitten by a, a snake or poisonous snake. So. Sie ist von einem Giftschlange gebissen worden. Oder sie hat sich erlaubt von einer yes. Giftschlange zu beißen. Okay, so, it's 28. So, this, this uh, two returnings. Okay. Es diese zweimal zurückkehren nach Rom. The first one was... The first one was... The first one was nach dem Kampf. Um Actium. And the second. And das zweite. It's what we read now. Was wir jetzt weiterlesen werden. Next paragraph. Nächster Absatz. The next great enterprise of the Romans after the overthrow of Egypt was the expedition against Judea, and the capture and destruction of Jerusalem. So what was the second one? So was war der zweite? Destruction of Jerusalem. Yes, destruction of Jerusalem. Zerstörung von Jerusalem. So this was 31 BC. So this was 31 for Christus. And Jerusalem was destroyed 78. And Jerusalem <laughs> is 70 nach Christus zerstört. Okay, and it goes on to say. And it goes on to say. The Holy Covenant is doubtless the covenant which God has maintained with his people under different forms and in different ages of the world, that is, with all believers in him. The Jews rejected Christ in according to the prophecy that all who would not hear their prophet should be cut off. They were destroyed out of their own land and scattered to every nation under heaven. And while Jews and Christians alike suffered under the oppressive hands of the Romans, it was doubtless in the reduction of Judea especially, that the exploits mentioned in the text were exhibited. And it's also interesting, <coughs> because um, yeah, what was, what was um, captured or taken captive when Rome destroyed Jerusalem? Was ist gefangen genommen oder eingenommen, als Rome Jerusalem zerstörte? It's also marked on this arc of Triumph in Rome. It is auch markiert auf diesen Bogen, Triumphsbogen in Rome. Was the candlestick, gold yeah. candlestick, the golden okay. leuchter, and also the table of showbread. And okay. auch den um, Schaubrottisch. Okay, so they, they took both these 
items out of the temple and brought them to Rome. Similar to what Nebuchadnezzar did. Right? Okay, so you can just see the parallel to it. Okay. Yeah. Nobody really knows. Okay. Probably in the Vatican. I mean, the, the, the golden candlestick, you can trace a little bit better than the table of showbread. Also, der goldene Leuchter kannst du verfolgen ein bisschen besser als diesen Schaubrottisch. Uh, if I remember correctly, they, the Vandals came and plundered Rome and they took it. So, wenn ich erinnere, die Vandalen sind gekommen und haben Rom gesackt und haben das mitgenommen. And then it somehow afterwards came to Byzanz. The Byzanz. Ach so, Byzanz. Byzanz. Also, Byzanz. Byzantin. Byzantin. Yeah. Byzantin. Yeah. So, so ist es irgendwie danach in Byzantine yeah. erschienen worden. Uh, but from that on, from the time onward, you cannot really trace it anymore. Okay. But danach ist es nicht mehr zu verfolgen. And the table of showbread is even more difficult to trace. Und der Schaubrottisch ist sehr schwierig zu folgen, uh, zu verfolgen. Most likely, it's both is in, in the Vatican, I guess. <laughs> ist wahrscheinlich beide in den Kellern von Vatikan. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> anyways, I think for. Tonight it's enough, okay? Also für heute reicht das erstmal. But we can see basically how now in verse 23 there was again a step back in history and time. Also wir können sehen, dass von Vers 23 es ist zurückgegangen in die Geschichte in der Zeit. Uh, to the leak between the Romans also and the Jews. Bündnis zwischen den Römern und den Juden. And this was then also when Rome came up peaceably prophetically spoken okay und prophetisch gesehen es ist von diesem datum an dass rom friedlich äh, heraufgekommen ist uh, by obtaining territory territories through inheritance or legacy indem dass sie äh, territorium erobert haben durch erbschaft oder wo ist legacy uh, über überlassungen überlassungen yeah. and the city of rome became their stronghold und der Stadt Rom ist ihre Festung geworden für eine Zeit. Uh, which begins with the Battle of Actium. Und diese Zeit fängt an mit dem Kampf um Actium. Uh, where then, 360 years later, Rom, the seat of government, went to Constantinople. 360 Jahre später, den Sitz von Rom ist gewechselt zu Konstantinopel. And this war of Rome was Egypt in this battle here. Und der Kampf zwischen Rom und Ägypten in diesem Kampf. Was a war between Mark Antony and Cleopatra in the south and Caesar Augustus in the north. Es war ein Kampf zwischen Mark Antony und Cleopatra im Süden und Caesar Augustus im Norden. And basically, Mark Antony was then deserted by his own forces and committed suicide because they couldn't bear his unreasonable behavior. Okay. Und in Vers 26 Mark Antony ist verlassen worden von seinen eigenen Streitkräften weil sie es gar nicht ertragen konnte, sein verliebte Verhalten. Und um, dann Vers 27. Und Vers 27. Uh, Mark Antony and Caesar, so that's basically like a... Explanation. Explanation, ja. Yeah, also, flashback or... Ja, also so 27 ist seine Erklärung über die Geschichte vor diesem Kampf. But before that, Mark Antony and Caesar, they made an apparent leak with each other but also, it didn't hold because both wanted to have their whole kingdom. Okay. So, davor hat Mark Antony und Caesar diese scheinbare Bündnis miteinander geheuchelt, es war aber geheuchelt, weil beide wollten der Gesamtherrschaft haben. And then verse 28 speaks about these two returnings of Rome. Und Vers 28 okay. spricht über diese zwei Zurückkehrungen von Kampf nach Rom. Uh, so the first then after this battle of Actium und der erste war nach diesem Kampf von Actium and the second one was then the destruction of Jerusalem when they brought back the riches from Jerusalem und das zweite war die Zerstörung von Jerusalem wenn die Reichtümern Jerusalems gesagt haben okay so that what brings us down to AD 70 here yes. in this das bringt uns bis zur uh, 70 nach Christus in diesem Vers okay so and tomorrow we will just continue down to verse 35 und morgen werden wir fortsetzen bis Vers 35. And then I think we have covered everything what at least Uriah Smith covered. Und dann haben wir alles gedeckt, zumindest was Uriah Smith richtigerweise gesagt hat. And I hope that we have then a better overview of these verses in Daniel 11. Und ich hoffe dann, dass wir einen besseren Überblick von diesen Versen Daniel 11 haben. Amen. Amen. Okay, then let's close with our prayer. Dann lass uns mit unserem Gebet schon da abschließen.